Welcome back to Game Scoop, everybody. I'm your host, Damon Hatchfield. I'm joined now by some very special guests, Per Schneider, Fran Mirabella, Sam Claiborne. Hey, everybody. And we're talking about some sad news, passing of Hiroshi Yamauchi, longtime president of Nintendo, but we're here to celebrate the life of a very uh, important figure in the history of video games. Yeah. I dare say we would not be here right now were not for this man. Not what he did. True. Yeah. I think he was important mainly in the business side of things, right? Although he did, you know, approve every single Nintendo game we ever played. But business-wise, like, him and Nolan Bushnell, the founder of Atari, were probably the two most important innovators in how to make video games, you know, something that you can make money off of. Uh, Yamauchi did the home games. Uh, uh, Nolan Bushnell did pioneered home games a little bit before him mm -hmm. with Atari and then, you know, the arcade machines. But, but I think Yamauchi had a real knack for picking the right talent to actually create mm -hmm. the, you know, the creative product of the company, right? He was the guy who discovered Gunpei Yokoi and, mm -hmm. you know, the hard, famous hardware designer that gave us, you Game know, some Boy. of these amazing machines here, but also Miyamoto. Moto, right? He took he a chance. Something in Miyamoto? Yeah, he took a chance on somebody young and unproven, and basically gave him his his first game, right? Yeah, and they weren't game designers. They yeah. were they were other they were employed in other parts of mm -hmm. Nintendo. Miyamoto yeah, yeah. could draw very well, but was really imaginative, and you know, out came Donkey Kong at the mm -hmm. other end. And I think you can credit uh, Yamauchi with a lot of those decisions and a lot of kind of the, just the guts to take a chance on people. Yeah, I mean, that's we were talking about it yesterday, and we thought, first of all, there's probably a lot of people who don't realize like this was the guy that had Nintendo, a whole new generation of people. But he was such a great leader, and he's well documented saying he didn't really play many games, you know. And that people give him a lot of crap for any. He has a reputation for being very stoic. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. at, at running a company that makes you know amusement yeah. products. But he was a great leader, and that was yeah. the point. He picked a great talent. Any great leader knows kind of how to drive the business, and he really did. And he he really saved. You know, you could say he saved the video game industry. Exactly. Atari crashed yep. uh, in the 80s, and he came in, you know, with the NES product, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Yep. That turned everything around. Like you mm -hmm. said, we wouldn't be here today. And, and the reason was that he uh, instituted a series of things to combat what went wrong at Atari. So uh, there was a, a flood of terrible games, right? Mm -hmm. So he created a, an excruciating process for approving Nintendo games. You could only make a certain amount a year if you're a third-party company. He had to approve every single one. Um, there was just you know, these rules to make it so there wasn't fluff. There wasn't fluff on that system. Sounds like Steve Jobs a little yeah, bit, Yeah, right? and if you if you you know hear from journalists who covered the business in Japan from the era, he was almost like the emperor, right? You went in as a third party to ask for approval or to become a third party uh, publisher for Nintendo, and it, it was you know he was just this highly respected guy who had to put a stamp of approval on everything. So it's kind of ironic, <laughs> right? He's not the guy who would play the games and actually say whether they're good. He would look at the games, he would look at the <laughs> concept, and he would look at the final product too, and he would can some stuff outright mm -hmm. and say, this is not the right direction from us. And people would be like, but, but, but maybe they wouldn't say anything, right? Because they'd be yeah. a, little bit, a little bit scared too. Yeah. But, you know, they would just give up and do something else. And... From my perspective, that sounds like a terrible boss. You know? <laughs> but but a shrewd businessman, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think people probably in his presence were a little bit intimidated. In fact, I think you met him once, right? I met him twice. Yeah, twice. It okay. was interesting. It's crazy to me. It is crazy. Well, you know, I was uh, I, I covered N64, of course, back in the days, you know, like, what, 16 years ago or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was an event called Space World that Nintendo ran in Tokyo, in Makuhari, actually, outside mm. where Tokyo Game Show is. And uh, it was all Nintendo. And, you know, the first time I saw him, I was on the show floor and they're playing, uh, you know, they're showing off all these games, inclu including the original Animal Crossing on N64 that never came out in the Animal US, Forest. right? Yeah, Animal Forest. Um, and you could just, it was filled with people and you could see people just parting. You know, there was like all this commotion going on and then some very tall people in black suits and then suddenly like outsteps you know, Hiroshi Yamauchi with his entourage, Minagawa, the translator, who's been with Nintendo for a long time. Wow. And, you know, you just get this kind of respect. Everybody took a step back, right? Nobody rushed forward to go like, hey, will you take my picture? <laughs> or, you know, nobody did that. Everybody just kind of parted and you walked through and, you know, it was, it was pretty intimidating just well, to see him. Okay, so yeah, I had the same experience yeah. at Space World in 2000 uh -huh. when I started covering it. You saw him also? Time at GameCube. So I had yeah. the same experience and I described it with similar words that you had before. He was kind of like the emperor, the, the amount of respect mm -hmm. he got. To me, it was almost ethereal. He was coming down the steps. This was so. This was the first and last time that I saw Yamauchi. He came down the steps, and you saw this commotion. This small guy, actually, he's not, he was very thin and pretty tiny, then surrounded by this entourage. Yeah. And as he came down the steps, they bowed to their toes. Yeah, and so really low. if you know a thing or two about bowing, the, the, how deep you go is a sign of respect. And they were going down to their toes, and as he steps down, you know, it was just uh, 
it was amazing to see like this is the guy. Yeah. And that was sort of the first and last time I saw him. But you you could tell how much influence he had based on that. I got to bow to him afterwards too. But I you know I honestly didn't exchange a <coughs> sentence with him other than you know yeah. Oshku, like you yeah, know being honored to meet him. But it was backstage um, on a on the way to an interview with the creator of Doshi and the Giant. Remember that mm. one, right? Yeah. It was still Unreleased. a sixty four DD game at the time, and you know walking through and then you walk into this room and there's a table and they're all sitting there and it's like ah you know. And he's just sitting there looking at us. And you know, one thing you need to know about the press back in those days, they didn't take us seriously, right? Like for Nintendo, the internet was just kind of a weird thing that these young guys who are covering us, you know, they knew we were kind of important, but not really. Yeah. And so, you know, just walk forward and bow to him. And like, he, he just, like, the, the temperature is lower in the room when he's in it, right? Like, he, you are scared of this guy when, mm -hmm. you, when you see him. Yeah. And so, to think that that's how he ruled Nintendo, you can tell people were always antsy around him. Think sure how different that is that. than Satoru Iwata, the current president yeah, of Nintendo. Guy, right? Who gets on stage and, like, holds a banana and drives yeah. in a Mario Kart and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. it, it couldn't be more different. No, he, he's he's a different. spokesperson for the company. Mm -hmm. And Yamauchi was never that. Which, you know? which is ironic because he took a business that was, you know, uh, playing cards, later taxis and love hotels and turned it into a toy company. And when you think of toy makers, you think of fun, right? And uh, while he wasn't the maker of the toys, he was leading the company, but he is the ex exact opposite of that. Yeah, he's so. the perfect ironic toy company owner. Yeah. I love the arc. I mean, so Nintendo has been known for as a video game company for 30 some years now. But the company goes way back to the late 1800s, right? Like mm -hmm. they're, yeah. it's a really, really old a company. Food of cards. Mostly making playing cards, and then when he he was sort of like forced into taking over. Uh, he, yeah, the company. because his grandfather's health was failing. Like yeah. he never wanted to become the leader of the company, but he took over. At 22 so, years old. Yeah, he was really yeah. young. A reluctant young leader, and then you know the one of the first things he did was kind of focus on, hey, what can we do with the business? How can we turn he it around? He experimented, diversified. Yeah. Taking, yeah, I mean, he launched a taxi cab line, but he also signed a, a deal with Disney to create yeah. Disney Hanafuda playing cards. Mm -hmm. Hanafuda playing cards, really traditional Japanese stuff, and he brings this American stuff into it, right? It, it, it was, was a third party deal that yeah. was so popular in Japan. I mean, it, it was it the blew up, selling, right? It was yeah, huge, yeah, huge selling cards. Disney, set. of course, hugely influential, sets. hugely influential in Japan, right? Um, it influenced a lot of the, the drawing styles and the anime uh, mm -hmm. genre in total. And so he spotted that and jumped on it and turned the playing cards into that. So that was really clever. In the 60s and 70s, electronics become cheaper to manufacture. They started creating electronic toys. Uh, he hired Gunpei Yokoi in the 60s, so yeah. when that happened, uh, they started making toys like the Ultra Hand and the, uh, the Ultra Machine, which mm. are these kind of just plastic toys you put in your house. There's a love tester, which is pretty yes. cool. Yeah, that's right. Um, and one. Gunpei Yokoi designed those. Now, he's a game you might recognize, too, because he created Metroid, mm -hmm. and he created he worked on Kid Icarus, and he created the Game Boy, and eventually the Virtual Boy, which actually uh, he, was, he was kind of forced out of the company by Yamauchi for. Yeah. After, yeah, Virtual Boy was not a major success, and... Uh, mm -hmm. He left. Yeah, he, you know, got, he got a window seat, which is a, it's a Japanese business practice. When you have somebody in the company who is you know, established and well-regarded, you don't want to fire that person because yep. it reflects poorly on you, but you give them something to do that is not that awesome. It's basically mm -hmm. a window seat. They're, they've got something to do, but they don't really have any influence. So yeah. you, know, you can tell he was a tough guy. Like and, when and to something didn't work. credit, he found this guy who pretty much designed Prolific. a huge yeah. mm -hmm. amount of Nintendo's yeah. toys and eventually games, games yeah. and products like for four decades. It's yeah. just amazing. But the way I love the consistency though, like think about the, the Ultra Hand and the Ultra Pitcher and then the Ultra 64, which mm -hmm. became yeah. of course the Nintendo 64. There's consistency like, over the line yeah. you know, of yeah. thinking is just really, really cool. We were looking at some of the old Nintendo toys and there's ones that look like the Famicom. There's yeah. an Ultra From, like, Scope, the 60s, which right? is like a Periscope yeah. toy that it's, it's gray and red and it just looks like the, Super, or it looks like the Famicom. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really funny. And that's Yokoi's kind of design vision, but mm -hmm. know, lasted and, forever. The Magnavox Odyssey, was that the first home console that was sold here in the U.S.? Yeah, it was, and there's the Odyssey 2 that was yeah, a little yeah. bit more. But then uh, he licensed the Odyssey to sell in Japan. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. He licensed Pong, Pong machines to sell in Japan, and mm -hmm. then he said, well, Pong we, Pong. Should, we should make our own. Yeah, game. And, that uh, and they even made a Color, a color TV 6 game, mm -hmm. uh, which is essentially Pong in color in Japan. That was Nintendo's first Nintendo uh, you know, video game system. But then they went, you know, th their first success was not... Any of those things. It was, of course, Donkey Kong. Yeah, yeah. And it was. The it was bringing the was huge design. hit game to America uh, in the form of you know a refrigerator-sized machine, not a home machine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was the first big thing they did that started to change everything, and that's what brought them in the video games. I think one couple of things I really like about Yamauchi as well are the money facts. Um, mm. Never wanted to borrow money, so to this day, I believe Nintendo has borrowed 
has not borrowed a dime. It's not traditional. Companies normally like borrow some money, you expand your business. He didn't want to do it. He's afraid of debt. Yeah, That's afraid of debt. Exactly. Never wanted to be in debt and borrow money, that is, to, to get out of debt. And then, um, you know, he was one of the richest men in Japan. He was at the height of the Wii, I believe. Yeah. Uh, at the height of the Wii sales, he was valued at $7.8 billion, I think it was, and he was the richest man in Japan. He could have bought even more baseball teams yeah. than the Mariners. Yeah, he bought the Mariners. Yeah, he bought the Mariners. Well, so when they opened up Nintendo of America, he put his son-in-law in charge. Uh-huh. Uh, Arakawa. 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 Yeah. Arakawa. Uh-huh. He, and he was in charge of Nintendo of America until Reggie took over, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and Married to family his daughter, company. actually, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, because it's his son-in-law. Right, exactly. But, I mean, Yamauchi's yeah, yeah. daughter was Arakawa's uh, <clears throat> wife. Yeah. And it was, you know, Nintendo was a family business, so, you know, mm-hmm. taking, kind of continuing on that way made sense. But, of course, with Iwata, you know, a lot, a lot changed with that company. I just love that also, you know, Yamauchi started by looking at the West, kind of what's going on in the West, and then right. trying to adapt it in Japan. But then, you know, later on, he, I mean, that guy had... had entrepreneurial courage to fl- that to just kind of do things completely differently, right? And we, when we first started covering games at IGN, um, we used to look at these statements from Yamauchi in the press all the time, right? Incendiary things that he would say. Like, I remember when Microsoft announced the Xbox, he's like, oh, it's this company that has a lot of money and they think they can go into the video game business. That's never going to work, right? Like, he's done, he said these things out publicly in the Japanese press, um, but he also said some stuff about, you know, whether the pursuit of power in video game consoles makes that much sense. Yeah, and, he was disparaging a power, yeah. like high-powered systems. And, and that was contradicted a little bit when they put out the GameCube. Um, you know, he was saying that at the time, but then, of course, the Wii was the, re- the embodiment of that. But already in 2004, he basically said, I don't believe that we should launch new consoles. We should mm-hmm. extend the life of the consoles, which is what everybody did in the generation afterwards, right? Yeah. Like with Kinect and everything. He invented, oh, not Yamochi, but Nintendo invented the mm-hmm. Wii remote controls for the GameCube as a system mm-hmm. to extend the life of the machine. And I think Nintendo got cold feet. Instead mm-hmm. of writing it through with the GameCube, they released it as a new platform and you know, whatever you want to say about the Wii right now, that was a huge hit, right? It got people to play and games. An even bigger hit, of course, was the DS and his one of his final decisions. So he was kind of moved from... Like chairman of the board? Yeah, yeah president mm-hmm. to chairman. Yeah. And, and at that point, he just made a recommendation. Why don't we try a, a handheld system with two screens? And then put really all Nintendo's eggs in one basket with it. And there's some famous quotes about him saying, you know, Nintendo would, would end up very poorly if yeah. the DS failed, and the DS did not fail. I think he said it, we're either on the way to heaven, right, like a play on the name Nintendo, which mm-hmm. is the heavenly way, or we will go to hell. Yeah. Like, he was very dramatic in yeah. everything that he did. Right? Yeah, he also pretty much, in another quote, had said it would crush them or destroy them mm-hmm. if it wasn't successful. Yeah. Lucky for them, it was extremely successful. Yeah. Uh, it was a very good decision. I would have liked to hear his thoughts on the Wii U. Yeah, it would have been amazing to hear but what again, he But again, he wasn't a man that you just go interview. No. <laughs> yeah, he was very um, hidden away, actually, which sure. um, maybe somewhat ironically, Yamauchi means within the mountain. So it was mm-hmm. almost that hard to get access to him. So, yeah. yeah. He had an incredible life, and his uh, importance and relevance to the industry really cannot be overstated. Yeah, I don't think so. Still going to continue on. I think yeah. the company, Nintendo today, is still him. You can see it. Sure. You know, I'll be very curious to see from Iwata and the future leaders when it is not as much of Yamauchi, but I don't even know if that's possible. He's mm. ha- half a century of influence. I hope somebody else will step up who has the guts to kind of speak speak his mind, right, mm. out in the public and doesn't just admit failure or, you know, say, hey, we need to do better there, but actually says specifically what they think is wrong in the market or what they want to change. And I think he had that. Yeah. And I hope Nintendo will, you know, will find someone who will do that in the future too. Thank you, gentlemen, for taking the time to talk a little bit about the life of Hiroshi Yamauchi. Stay tuned for more from IGN Gamescoop.